worst case scenario we hit the reef and as you said we call for help and someone rescues us and if we, we are done <laughs> i mean lily wanted to see helicopter rescue maybe today is the day she said it, it would be, be so, pretty cool she said it would be so cool to see that <laughs> i wouldn't call that cool but In the last episode, we enjoyed a short trip to the reef north of the Whitsundays. But with the wind picking up, it's time to go back to Hook Island to shelter. The tricky part being that it is always difficult and nerve-wracking to control the boat precisely enough to get off the reef when it's windy. So what's the plan today? Just to try to get off that reef. I don't know how easy it's gonna be. Worst case scenario, we hit the reef and as you said, we call for help and someone rescues us. And if we, we are done. <laughs> that was my way of uh, reassuring you. Like, what is the worst case scenario? I mean, Lily wanted to see helicopter rescue. Maybe today is the day. She said it, it would be, be so, pretty cool. She said it would be so cool to see that. I wouldn't call that cool, but. of the boat she has to move the map as it goes <laughs> so that yeah, the captain can see it we are on the clear I think we're good we made it we out of the reef Woo! out of the reef out of the <laughs> easy peas lemon squeeze <laughs> easy now we have a nice sail to get to a bit Sundays and when I say nice gonna be bumpy <laughs> and someone's gonna get sick <laughs> yep. yes lynn you will but that's a story we won't tell for now let's just focus on the journey the girls are learning to set up the cells and different wind angles mean different experiences for them so in a way it's good we are on a beam ridge to close hole angle which is never super pleasant for us but we are managing to get really good speed so not complaining <laughs> Flying through this course. What do you think about it? How was the sail? Way quicker than expected. I think we did an eight and a half knots average. So that's more than what we used to. And we had two reefs. So I think that was good. It was a bit bumpy, but I think that was fine. It was a quick one. And just like that, we are back to Hook Island. We will only spend a bit over a day here, hiding from the wind and waiting for the rain to pass. But even with poor conditions, we had some fun and the girls went for a swim. There's always something fun to do in a boat, even on rainy days. So what's the plan? So we are going to the reef, but the reef is far away. So to get there during the day, we're gonna leave now, which is almost 6 p.m., sail all night and be there in the morning. There's like 100 nautical miles. So we should be there around 11, 12, maybe. And yeah, it's gonna be fun sailing by night, <laughs> what we love. Are but you excited? So excited. <laughs> but that's the price to pay to be there on time tomorrow and enjoy the reef. So we're gonna have to suffer the night sail. On my shift, I've got Lily with me. Yay. We show you when we say when we do our shift, and uh, Cecil is uh, with Alice. We'll see how they cope together. <laughs> Team Alice and Sisu. 
time to go, let go of the mooring and call and store safety line. I remember that coiling a line is one of the first things that I learned when we took our sailing lessons, so I was excited to show Alice how to do it. And she and Lynn are such quick learners, they got it in no time. Okay, I'll tell you the truth, Alice and Lynn were super helpful during the day, but they did not master the night sail. To be honest, I can't blame them. Seasickness gets harder for most people when you can't see the horizon, and Jan and I are not part of these people that truly enjoy night sailing, so we let them sleep and handled the shifts until the morning. Morning. Now we have like... Hours left to the reef, enough for the sand to get high enough. Look what I found. Flying fish. Fly. Flying fish class. That's unlucky for him. Imagine you're just flying with waves and suddenly you land on the boat. a little bit so we don't see all the movies but we've got a track so we know where we're going the wind is running a little bit higher than expected but I think that's still fine it's like 15 knots so it should be alright to get on the way Alrighty, time to go in the water. So we've been to this reef before and honestly it's one of our favorites and the coral is simply breathtaking. So yeah, we are quite excited to go back. There's different zones that we want to explore but I think we're going to be there for a few days anyway so we'll have time. First is going to be this one. Let's see what we can find. We're obviously going to be spare fishing because it's not a green zone. Let's go explore, let's get some fish and enjoy the water.
Man, that was one of the coolest things that we saw in the water relating to sharks. A pregnant one. <laughs> so cool. And actually this got me wondering, are sharks mammals? Simple answer is no, they are fish, even though the majority of the 500 species give birth rather than laying eggs. To explain the main differences with mammals, let's compare to a dolphin, shall we? The first thing is about breathing. Dolphins breathe air through their lungs, where sharks get oxygen from the water through gills. And no, contrary to common belief, sharks don't have to keep swimming to breathe, otherwise this one would have been dead. Second is the tail direction. Dolphins' tails are horizontal, so they use the up and down propulsion, but sharks' tails are vertical for side-to-side -side propulsion. This means that dolphin can swim backward, whereas sharks can't, although not sure how useful that is, so that's how you easily tell the difference. But if you want a more scientific explanation, all mammals share the following traits. Hair, and yes, dolphins have some at birth, and whales have sensory hairs along their jaw. Ear bone, although it's hard to see on marine mammals, but think about it. Dolphin and whales use sounds to communicate. They are warm-blooded, Sharks are cold-blooded, for sure. They have mammary glands for nursing the young. For sharks, as soon as the baby is born, he's on his own. And they have a neocortex, which is a part of the brain involved in higher functions like sensory perception, motor commands, conscious thought, spatial reasoning and language. Well, you know everything about sharks versus mammals now. I just wanted to take this opportunity to raise awareness around a big problem that is endangering marine mammals, especially here in Australia. So remember, I just told you about the fact that mammals have ear bones. Deep sea drilling and seismic blast, mostly used to find gas, is endangering those species because it's creating noise and vibration, which is leaving them deaf, therefore unable to navigate or forage for food. It is a big problem that I think the public should be aware of. Enough with the science now. We're going to prep those two fish that Jan caught, have lunch and probably go back in the water. Join us next time to see that. I'll be sharing our favorite recipe of the moment to prepare those fish. Uh, we really love it. It's so yummy. And yeah, I hope you like this video. Make sure to drop us a like and subscribe to the channel. Please share with your friends and families and we'll see you next time. Bye.